Hi guys, uh, Midwest Outdoorsman here with another uh, video. Um, this time I wanted to talk about uh, rifle calibers. And um, it's a pretty touchy subject because there's so many people that have so many opinions on different stuff. And uh, I'm not here to bash anybody's opinion. Uh, I'm here just to give you my take on rifle calibers, um, good ones, what they're for, maybe some bad ones. Uh, sort of a, a rifle battery. I'm going to do a different uh, video on that about uh, a good battery of rifles to have. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be indicative upon where you live and what you're hunting, obviously. Um, there's no one solution for everything, for everyone, all the time. But uh, I just wanted to give people that maybe don't know as much, or even people that do know a lot, um, that are just kind of debating on a, a rifle purchase, or if you know, you're know you looking at getting more rifles or scaling down your collection or whatever, uh, and, you know the reasons why I choose what I choose and why I think they're good and um, what I use them for and how I think they can be applied to pretty much everything um, so we'll start off by saying okay what you know you can see I got some different cartridge selections here and just so you know what they are that's just our standard 22 long rifle a rimfire this is your standard uh, 556 or 223 Remington um, this is the uh, 300 Winchester Short Mag WSM. This is a 375 Ruger, and that's a great rifle battery right there. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. What I want to mainly talk about is um, this class right here, your main rifle calibers that's going to be hunting most big game. Um, and for me, I've used all kinds of cartridges from 243s, you know, 223s, um, 270s, 280 Remington, 7mm Remington Magnums, uh, tons of different 300s and 30 calibers, 308, 30 out 6, 300 Winchester Short Mag, 300 Remington Short, Short Action Ultra Mag, the regular 300 Ultra Mag, 300 Winchester Mag, um, as well as, you know, guns like uh, that my dad and my brother have used for you know our entire hunting lives 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser uh, my dad has a military rifle that's sporterized in that he really likes that um, my brother he's a big fan of the 300 Ultra um, he also has a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum for a long time um, and uh, 3030 Winchester I've actually got a lot of experience with that a lever action cartridge um, so I've got a pretty good experience of different calibers from you know your small bores, your 22 243s, 6.5s, all the way up to your 30s, and uh, even a little bit beyond. But for me, the the magic number, the magic caliber is 30 caliber. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to bash if somebody loves a seven millimeter or a six millimeter or whatever. I'm not saying that those calibers aren't good or they can't do the job because they certainly do and they do it every every year. Um, so don't. I'm not trying to say anything negative against other calibers. I'm trying to just say positive things about 30 calibers and why I think they're so positive, uh, especially the 300s. And I'll take maybe some flack for that because the 30 out six is one of the most beloved cartridges of all time, especially in North America but even around the world. Um, for me, um, you know, it depends on where you're hunting too, but I, I hunt a lot of different terrain. I hunt in Wisconsin where um, on a stand I can get shots that are at my farthest 50 yards or maybe 100, 150 yards, depending on what stand I'm in. I can go out on the marsh and do drives and get shots that are 350 yards or 400 yards. I've gone out west mule deer hunting. You know, there you can, you know, as far as you can comfortably shoot and hit your target you can pretty much name your distance um, so there's a lot of variables in there now if somebody is the kind of person where they only hunt you know one species you know if they only hunt white-tailed deer they only hunt it in thick brush out of one stand one time a year they never do anything else they're never going to go anywhere else or never do anything else that's gonna you know drive what cartridge you want to pick and you certainly won't need um, a bigger cartridge or more powerful cartridge to do one job all the time and that's it but like most people I do hunt I hunt in a lot of different terrains or you know not I'm not in the same spot all the time you know some people want to hunt moose sometimes or elk or you know sometimes even with those species you're hunting them open canyon to canyon shots sometimes you're in the timber where you're only shooting 25 yards 
So you want a cartridge that can do it all and do it all well. Not just get by, but you want a cartridge that can do it all really, really well. And they're, for me, um, it's just 30 calibers, especially the 300s, um, are perfect. Because, for one, you get the most uh, velocity per bullet weights, in my opinion. Like, you look at, like, let's say the 270 Winchester or the 280 Remington, which are good calibers and stuff, but you look at what, like, a 150 grain bullet going at, what, 2,890 feet per second or so um, out of, like, a 270 Winchester. All right, and so you look at that versus, like, a 30 out 6 or a 300. You know, out of the, out of the 300 WSM, which is probably my favorite 300, um, you can drive that 150 grain bullet at 3,300 feet per second if you want. That's a big difference, especially if you're going to go out west and hunt mule deer and you're going to be shooting 500 yards versus, you know, I'm not saying those other calibers can't do it because they can't, but, you know, you gain a lot by jumping up to that 300. A lot of people don't like the recoil, which is another reason I love the 300 WSM. I hunted with the 300 Winchester Magnum for years. Uh, it was actually one of the first rifles. I think it was the first rifle I ever bought when I was 16 on my own. I uh, used to work construction. I used to work on a concrete crew. Saved up my money, saved up my money. And finally, I went out and bought a Remington 700 BDL and 300 Winchester Mag. Uh, beautiful rifle. I hunted with it for years and years and years. Shot a ton of deer with it. And it was a great rifle, but in the end, the rifle was a little bit too heavy for me. It was without scope, without anything, just bare bones rifle. It was seven and a half pounds, which ain't super heavy, but it's it's more weight than I wanted to carry, uh, especially a lot of, with a lot of the walking that I do and doing deer drives and stuff, or humping you know mountains out west. So uh, I uh, you know went through trading, you know buying, selling, you know all kinds of different calibers, and. Uh, I've pretty much settled on a short action 300 is my favorite. Now I'm not saying they're perfect because they're not. There are some serious cave you know caveats that you want to consider when you're looking at those. And I'm not saying you have to choose the exact one. I mean the 300 Winchester is the most popular Magnum along with the seven millimeter seven millimeter Remington Magnum I think in the U.S. Um, of all time. But the 300 Winchester Magnum burns more powder. To get the same performance that the 300 WSM does, the 300 WSM kicks, in my uh, estimation, notice noticeably less, and the bolt throw is shorter, um, and it's, it matches the ballistics perfectly. A lot of these new cartridges that come out in the, in the advertised specs on them um, are only with a proprietary powder that the company, you know, the the ammunition companies load, and you can't do it yourself. You can't duplicate it yourself. The 300 Winchester short mag is one caliber that you can. You know, I used to reload all the time. I don't anymore. I don't really have the time, and it's not as cost-effective for me. So I buy factory ammo now. But it's a great cartridge. It has low recoil for the performance that you get. Um, you know, if you're really recoil shy, the difference between a 300 WSM and a 6 is, I don't think, it's so negligible that it, it's like, why, why even question the jump in performance? But, you know, a 30 6 does feed better. Depending on the rifle, I'll get to that later. Depending on the rifle action that you have, and you can fit one more in the magazine. But um, the performance of the 300 WSM right here is just so fantastic that uh, it's it's my favorite. And, you know, and you have so many bullet choices with 30 caliber, especially in America, um, that you the sky's the limit as far as reloading. If you're a reloader, I mean, you can reload you know 100, 110 grain, you know, varmint bullets all the way up to 200, 220 grain bullets. Um, now some people will say, oh, the 300 WSM doesn't load the larger bullets as well because it's a shorter cartridge. Well, yeah, obviously, uh, like a 300, regular 300 Winchester uh, Magnum or a 300 Ultra Mag is going to be able to reach higher velocities and stuff with those longer bullets. It doesn't mean the 300 WSM can't do it, but the cartridge is at its best with bullets from like 150 to 180 uh, grains. But anyways... As I was saying before, you want a cartridge that can do it all. And, and I was saying that I hunt in Wisconsin, and I also hunt out west, and I hunt in different terrains where the yardages are different, you know, from 50 yards as being a max range in a tree stand to 350 yards to 500 yards out west. And I don't want to have to switch up rifles constantly to do that. I want one gun and one one cartridge that's going to do everything I want in a, in a big game caliber that's going to take me up. And that's another thing as far as the species that you're hunting. 
I want a cartridge that's going to take me up through every non-dangerous uh, species that you can think of. You know, I mean, I'm talking in America, certainly, uh, you know, white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, moose, um, even bears. Um, that's kind of getting into the dangerous game there. But uh, you eat, you can obviously take a, a bear with a 30 caliber. A lot of people do it. Um, I would probably recommend a bigger caliber for bear. But if, you know, that that's up to the person. But, um, you know, if you go to Africa, there's it, tons of planes game. You know, you got the, the little brush bucks and all the little antelope, the spring bucks, all the way up into water buck and kudu and even up into eland, which are bigger than buffalo. The 300 calibers you know, will do it all, it's been, especially the 300 WSM. They'll do everything. You have to really watch your bullet choices depending on the game that you're hunting and where you're hunting. But they are, you know, there's so many loads for it. They're, the ammunition is easy to get. It's like the easiest magnum caliber besides the 300 Winchester and the 7mm uh, Remington magnum. And it's just a fantastic gun. It will do everything you want it to do. You can load it with... 150, even 130 grain bullets. 130 grain bullet, you can get 3,500 feet per second out of this cartridge, and you can load it with 150 grain bullets, get 3,300 feet per second, shoot antelope at 600 yards, and it'll just shoot like a laser. It'll hit hard. It'll buck the wind. It'll be really a fantastic cartridge for you, and you can still get bullets that have over 400 uh, ballistic coefficient in a 150 grain. And on the other side, let's say you want to go hunt moose, you can load 180 to 200. Uh, grain Barnes triple shock really tough bullets and it'll penetrate that moose completely do a fantastic job um, it, And you don't you're not giving anything up, you know You're not giving anything up by having it's some people will say well It's a 300 is too much gun for for a small deer and I'll disagree with that because I don't think there is anything Any such thing as overkill, you know if you want to hunt whitetails with a 458 lot go right ahead you're, It's not going to make them any better than a 243 or a 300 but if that's what you want to do Go right, go for it, you know. But it all depends on what you want. Now, a lot of people worry about meat damage. You know, I eat the deer that I shoot, and so that's why I love the Barnes Triple Shock because it's a tough bullet, solid copper, and it uh, it expands um, nicely, but it doesn't explode like a uh, a soft lead core bullet will. Um, and that's one thing that with these 300s, um, if you're not shooting longer ranges. Like, if you're shooting uh, inside 100 yards, I would go for more of a premium bullet, a tough bullet, such as a Swift A-frame, a Barnes Triple Shock, uh, or Barnes Tip Triple Shock, um, uh, Trophy Bond Bear Claw, um, Nozzles or E-Tip, uh, Hornaday GMX, um, you know, something with a, that's a premium controlled expansion or tough bullet. Uh, Nozzle Inner Bond's another good one, or Hornaday Inner Bond. Um, and uh, you can shoot deer. I've shot deer at 10, 10 feet doing drives before through the shoulders with a Barnes triple shock. And obviously it kills them just fine, but it doesn't blow the hell out of them and it doesn't ruin the meat. Like if you were going to use this cartridge, and let's say you shot it with a 150 grain ballistic tip that same deer at 10 feet, you're going to have a lot of meat damage. And it's not going to, you're, you're going to think, well, this is you know ridiculous. I shouldn't be using this cartridge. And it's it's the bullet choice made it with the cartridge for the type of hunting that you're doing. Um and that there again is another all-around choice. I don't like to have to switch. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. You know, some people love that. They love to be able to, because it's such a versatile cartridge, they love to be able to put 130, 150 grain bullets and shoot really far with a, uh, like a nozzle ballistic tip or something that's going to expand better at five, 600 yards. And then they love to be able to put the, the tougher bullets in for moose at close range or whatever. For me, I like simplicity. I like to use one load one round, one rifle for everything. You're going to shoot better over time because you're going to know that gun. You're going to know the trajectory of that gun. Um, you don't have to worry about different kinds of ammo and different bullet weight and sighting it in differently. You can just sight that gun in, have it there. Plus, and you can reload. If you're going to reload, you can stock up on that ammo and you know while you can get components because a lot of times you can't get them nowadays um, or stock up on ammunition, and then you're set. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, you know, some people, including myself, love to experiment with stuff, but a lot of guys don't have the money to be buying 10 different rifles for 10 different situations or all different kinds of bullets and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I really think simplicity is the way to go. And for me, I love the 300, like I said, because it will do everything 
that a uh, a big game rifle should do up in a non-dangerous game. Even some dangerous game, but I would I would say everything up until the biggest non-dangerous game is what I would use this cartridge for. And um, as far as uh, as far as like a, a rifle battery, you know, I mean, that's another concept as far as you know the dangerous game. Um, what calibers would you choose or whatever, uh, depending on uh, where you're hunting and stuff. But for me, um, the 300s and the 30 calibers um, are just they're just the, the best. It's it's not really the middle ground I want to say, but you got like I said more reloading choices. You got great performance. You're talking uh, 3,500 feet per second from a 130 grain bullet, uh, 3,300 from a 150 grain bullet. You're talking um, about 3,150-ish um, for a 165 to 168 grain bullet. And you're talking 2,960 feet per second from a 180 grain. And you're talking about 2,800-ish, um, 2,750 maybe from a 200 grain bullet. And those are fantastic specs for the level of recoil, which I think is really light. I mean, my, my Browning X-Bolt, my 300 uh, WSM is chambered to, is only like six and a half pounds without a scope or anything. And some people say, oh my god, you know, the recoil of that gun. And, and if you have a really good um, designed recoil pad, if you want to check out my X-Bolt video, I talk about that kind of stuff. That really mitigates the, the recoil of these cartridges. I have a, a experience once where I had a Remington. Uh, model 700 with a th it was chambered to the 300 short action ultra mag which is really really close to the the 300 WSM and it had just a it had a cheap hard rubber butt pad that wasn't very thick on it and uh, I'm not recoil shy at all but I shot that gun you know sighting it in and doing load development and stuff and I got bruises on my shoulder and I'm like man I never really had this problem um, you know and it hurt from a 300 which never hurt me before so I'm like well alright so I went out and got a limb saver uh, R3 recoil pad, those are fantastic. Swapped it out, never had a problem, never had any more bruises, never had any pain whatsoever. It makes such a big difference. The, those little things like the recoil pad you have on the gun, more than gun weight and everything else. I mean, yeah, your heavier guns are going to recoil less, but I think it's more important to have a light gun that you can carry and maneuver more that you can also shoot well that, and gives you great performance. And that's why. I think the 300 WSM is just fantastic. It meets all those criteria and then some. Now, as far as criticism, um, there are a couple things that I think that you can knock the 300 WSM for. And the biggest thing is it's a rebated rim cartridge and it's short and fat, which is great for powder burn efficiency. Um, it's great for um, making it, you know, clean burning. It doesn't recoil as much because you're not burning as much powder as like a full length 300 Ultra Mag or 300 WSM to get the performance that you are. But it also means that you might have feeding problems. And uh, that's where your rifle selection made with the cartridge, I think, comes into play. Um, the 300 WSM, I believe, needs a straight line feeding magazine uh, rifle in order to operate without any hitches. Um, and what I mean by that is the cartridge, whatever magazine you have, it, it, when it is uh, stacked in there, it, it, it lines the cartridge up right with the center line of the bore, and it doesn't cant it to the side or to the top or bottom, so that um, when it you know feeds, it goes straight into the chamber, and it, and it doesn't have uh, to move really much at all. Because uh, I had like the same 300 short action ultra mag, and I've had other uh, versions too. In uh, like let's say a Remington 700, which is uh, just a regular push feed rifle, which is a great rifle, but with these short fat cartridges, I've had problems with them not feeding right. I've had them jam on me. I've had them not eject right. Um, I've had all kinds of problems from them. And that that isn't to say that if you have a Remington 700, that it's not going to feed the gun, you know, the cartridge, because certainly some people have them and they don't have problems with them and they love them and I'm, that's great. But for me. Um, especially if you're going after, you know, let's get, if you're going to go after a bear or something, I would um, definitely make sure I get a center line uh, straight feeding magazine rifle for this cartridge. And Browning, the Browning X bolt is one of those. Um, the Savage um, bolt action rifles are also straight line center feed. Um, and I'm trying to think of some other ones here offhand. I can't think of them offhand here. But I know that the, the Browning X bolt, the A bolt, the Savage. Um, those all do, and uh, that's something that you can look up maybe on your own. 
and check out if there's other, you know, if the rifle that you love to use most of the time is a straight line uh, center feed, or if it's not. I know the Remington is not, um, and that's why I won't buy a Remington in this cartridge. 30 out six, never had a problem with it. You know, 300 Winchester Magnum, the regular one, never had a problem. But with these short action calibers, I've had problems in those rifles. But now in my Browning Expo, it feeds like smooth as glass. Never had a problem. Never had one jam, and I've I've shot thousands of rounds, literally thousands of rounds in low development, hunting, all this stuff um, with these short magnum calibers and these straight line center feed bolt actions. And the, the Browning Expo is my favorite. I have another video on that. But um, So that's one thing to kind of look at as far as um, a negative, depending on what rifle you like. Now, if you're saying, well, I love the Remington 700. There's more aftermarket parts for it. You know, I, I would hesitate on the WSM. I would go... I, I would go with the 30 out six, or I would go with the 300 Winchester Magnum, um, because they're going to feed better for you. I believe over time, and you're not going to have to worry about it. Now, you know, you could take it to a gunsmith and make sure or whatever if your 300 WSM is going to feed right in a 700 and stuff. But that's more cost and more messing around. And um, those are just my recommendations based upon my experience. I'm not saying you know any one rifle is junk and one's great or whatever. I'm just saying that that's what I use and that's why uh, from my experience. Um, now also as far as why I choose the 30 caliber especially the 300s is um, that that level of energy I really noticed a significant improvement over like cartridges like let's say the 30-06, um, the 308 Winchester, the 280 Remington, the 270 Winchester, um, even just shooting smaller game like whitetails. A lot of our, you know, adult dual whitetails around here average probably 100 pounds or so. Not very big, right? So you think, wow, you know, it wouldn't, you know, that's, a lot of people say a oh, 300 is overgunned. And especially when you're shooting at uh, deer, we do a lot of deer drives in Wisconsin. And when you're shooting at running deer, um, I've seen deer shot with 2506s, 270s, that you shoot them and they don't, they don't even flinch. And they, were, they make people make good shots. They don't even flinch. And they take off running, and if there's no snow that year, you could have a, a problem situation on your hands because nobody wants to lose, you know, a deer. Now, out of all of the deer that I've shot, which I was trying to count the other day, I was trying to think of all the whitetails just in Wisconsin that I've shot, and I think it's it's well over 80 to 90, maybe 100. And um, I've never had one deer uh, get away from me that I shot with a 300. Never. Um, even if, let's say a deer is running and I shot, my shot was a little bit far back, it'll knock the deer down, it'll slow them up enough, which, you know, I'm not saying that's a substitute for bullet placement and accuracy because it's not. That's always the most important thing. I'd rather shoot a deer with a 243 through the heart than a 300 through, you know, the back hams or something. So I, I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying nobody is perfect all the time. And so when you have those shots where maybe you thought it was a good shot, the bullet didn't go where you thought it did or whatever, it gives you a margin of error, especially on the smaller game. And I've shot deer, you know, with 30 out sixes, and they do work just fine, but there's a noticeable step up when you move into the 300 class about it knocks the deer off their feet or the classic where I shoot them and their back legs fold up, front legs fold up, they go down, bam, they're done. They don't even move, which is great. They only have to track them. And that happens... Um, I'd say with this cartridge, I've only had maybe four or five deer ever run after the shot. Every other one's collapsed instantly. As soon as I pulled the trigger, they were done. And that's fantastic. Um, you don't have to track them. Um, as, as far as you know, it, the, being humanitarian, it kills the deer faster. Um, you don't have to worry about losing it. And especially when you're shooting at running deer, like we do when we do deer, deer drives and stuff, it makes a big difference. Even if you're not, even if you're just shooting at a deer, let's say you're shooting at a mule deer 400 yards away and you've practiced really well and everything and you're going to take that shot and you know you can make it, you've done it at the range and then you go to make that shot and you know the wind picks up just at the wrong time or whatever, that bullet drifts six inches and you hit it high or low or to the back or to the front. That 300 is going to make a big difference versus let's say a 270 on a marginal hit. It really does, in my experience. Um, you're going to get a better blood trail. You're going to put more shock into the animal. It's going to usually knock it down enough to where you can get another shot in right away. Um, 
if not put it down until you can get up there and just finish it off to where it doesn't even move um, and even if you make a perfect shot it, it, it really transfers more energy and you can really visibly see the effects on the animal and I think it kills a lot better now I'm not saying that 30 out 6 or any of these other cartridges don't kill because they certainly do and a lot of people use them and as long as you shoot you know straight that's fine I'm just kinda giving you one take on you know if you were to make a marginal hit or whatever but um, it really does make a difference. You know, I've shot deer with the 30 out six in the same, you know, doing the same drives over year and year, years and years and years. Um, I can see how far they go after I hit them with 30 out six or whatever versus a, a 300, and I can just really see that effect. And it really, especially when you're talking about having one cartridge to take you in all of the non dangerous game. Now, if you're gonna, the kind of person that wants to buy 10 rifles, one for antelope, you know, one for mule deer out west, one for white tails you know in Wisconsin or whatever you know what I'm saying um, then that's a little different because then you can specialize those cartridges you know to that task you could you could use a 7 millimeter STW or uh, 25 out 6 for shooting long range you know at, at small antelope or something and then you can use a, a 45 70 lever action if you're going to be shooting only 50 yards and you know that might be a little bit better for you but for me and for most people that aren't going to be able to afford all those different kinds of rifles they want one rifle that will do it all I think the 300s are the choice, and the 300 WSN specifically. Um, and, and then you're talking about going up into all these big non-dangerous game, especially let's say if you hunt elk or if you hunt moose. On white tails, it's not such a big deal. Um, like I said, you, you do notice a big difference. I do in shock and, and trauma and being able to hit those deer and knock them down or whatever. But it comes even, it, it's exponential if when you go up into the size of elk and moose. Um, if you go to Africa, you know, you're talking water buck, kudu, eland even. Um, it's it's such a big difference, you know. I mean, you can certainly kill an eland with a 270 Winchester. You hit him in the heart just like anything else. It'll kill him. But for that guy, like I said, like me, that wants that pretty much one gun for all your big game, non-dangerous game, uh, and you go up into the bigger four or five, six hundred pound, seven hundred pound, eight hundred pound animals, um, and these three hundreds really do shine, especially when you're going to shoot them at longer ranges out west. Let's say you're going to shoot, you know, an elk at three hundred yards, four hundred yards out west. You really, really want that energy of the three hundred. That's where your thirty out sixes and all your two seventies and two eighties are going to fall short, in my opinion. They'll still do it, but they're not going to do it nearly as effectively as. Uh, this these 300s and they're going to do it with re less recoil than the 33s like the 338 Winchester Magnum um the, like the 35 Wheelan all those other bear cartridges you know well 35 Wheelan's kind of it's based on the 30 at 6 case but you know not you know bigger calibers than the 30 that are intended for non dangerous game I don't think give you anything else on these other animals because I think the 30 is right where it's at as far as being able to shoot long range being able to shoot um, accurately, accurately at long range for the recoil level that you have, um, for the performance that you get, for the bullet selection that you get, and for the performance on the game. That you can shoot, you know, like I said, all these small animals all the way up to these large animals, and then once you hit those large animals, it really, really makes a difference. I mean, let's say you shot, you know, a kudu at 200 yards in Africa on the savanna, and you hit it in the liver, you know, a little bit far back, and you shot it with a 243, which I wouldn't recommend, but I'm just saying, then you shot it with a 300 and made that same hit. Now what would you want? You know, you're you're gonna. It really does make a difference. Um, and like I said, even if you make a perfect hit, um, it's gonna the animals are gonna run a lot less uh, distance. You're gonna get more trauma. You're gonna you know as long as you match your bullets to the game you're hunting, you're not gonna get any more or less meat destruction than you would with a smaller caliber. Um, if you're really worried about destroying the meat, you know, just match the bullet to the game that you're hunting. Um, use a tougher bullet if you want to not ruin as much meat or whatever. And also, you're going to get more penetration. Like on, a, let's say, a kudu or an elk or a moose, you can use a 165, 168, 180 ring bunch uh, triple shock, shoot them right through the shoulders, and it'll completely penetrate that moose. And you're going to get two exit holes. You're in an entry and an exit. You're going to get two holes for a uh, blood trail. It's going to deliver more shock. It's going to kill more effectively. You know, then let's say you shot it with a 243. Yeah, you might get in there and into the vitals and kill the animal and stuff, and it will work. But you, is it going to penetrate completely? Is it going to be effective as as a 300? I don't, I don't believe so. Um, so that's kind of my take on it. Um, 
and a little bit about as far as uh, why I choose that. And uh, as part of a rifle battery, I'm going to do, you know, like I said, another a video about the, the battery cartridges and uh, the dangerous game cartridges, um, which, you know, is really dependent upon what game you're hunting and stuff. Um, I like the 375s and the 416s, um, but that's kind of another video. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that uh, that I left out here. Um, I'm sure there is. I always think of stuff after the videos. But... Um, Basically, you know, to sum it up, um, personally, I believe if you're not going to have a ton of different rifles for different situations, if you want the best do-it-all calibers or, you know, best big game caliber, um, I believe it's a 30 caliber, and I believe it's in the 300 class, and I believe it's in the short action 300 class, whether it be a 300 WSM, which is what I choose, um, the 300, like a Remington short action ultra mag, which is a cartridge that's pretty much dead now. The 300 WSM has defeated it, I, I believe. Um... And uh, Ruger's uh, 300 Compact Magnum is another, it's another great cartridge, um, but that one doesn't really have any steam behind it as far as um, there's only Corner Days, the only one that's loading for it, um, where the 300 WSM is really universally has been adopted. It's been, you know, it's loaded by Federal, it's loaded by uh, Remington, it's loaded by Winchester, it's loaded by um, pretty much every, you know, Double Tap and all these major manufacturers. Um, the only one that I don't think loads for the 300 WSM is Hornady, but you can also get their components and you know reload for it if you want to. Um, it's got it doesn't stretch cases uh, like some of the belted magnums will. Um, it's got a really good case design, like uh, with a 30 some degree, 30 35 degree shoulder on it, which I like. Um, the rebated rim, you know, it can cause some feeding problems if you don't have it, in my opinion, in the right uh, action. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it. it you know, it's something that's been documented, um, but maybe they fixed everything and the angles or whatever of the feed ramps and the rails and all that. I'm not quite sure on that, but um, just from my personal experience, the short acting cartridges um, usually do have problems, uh, you know, feeding in rifles that don't have uh, straight line center feed uh, magazines. But uh, I think it's the best, you know, class of non-dangerous game cartridges. Um, that will take you into small game all the way up to large non-dangerous game and do it well. Um, I have these other two here kind of as a reference as far as, far as a bat, uh, far as like a rifle battery. Uh, the 22 long rifle, you know, for your small game rabbits and such. And then the 223, um, I have as far as, uh, I have a video about the AR or whatever, um, does double duty for me as far as defense and also for hunting smaller game as, uh, environments like coyotes, you know, prairie dogs, that kind of thing. Um, but as far as the big game caliber, to me, the 300s, 30 calibers, that's where it's at, and that's why. And this is just, you know, kind of a size comparison for these cartridges. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, I'm not trying, like I said, to knock anybody's favorite cartridges because, you know, I've used tons of them. I know a lot of people that use all different kinds. Everyone has a different situation where they hunt, different animals, whatever. I'm not saying anyone is bad. I'm just saying that I prefer these, uh, this cartridge. I'm, I prefer the 30 calibers um, vastly. Um, for especially for the guy that wants a one gun, uh, you know, one big game rifle for all non dangerous game, um, I think they're more versatile. I think they do their all of the jobs well, not just one little aspect of it. You're not giving up anything by getting a 300. Um, you're using enough gun, and you're you're getting uh, as long as you use a, a well designed rifle, you're not getting you know any more recoil than a 30 out six to me. Um, or even a 308, it's, it's 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 negligible to me. I'm not recoil sensitive, but that's my personal experience. As long as you have a well-designed rifle that fits you well with a good recoil pad, um, you can get a really light rifle that you can carry all day, but you can still have tons of power, tons of capability. And in the X-Bolt, you can hold three in the magazine and one in the rifle. So four rounds of 300 WSM, I mean, that to me is, is uh, just about right for any game in the world that's non-dangerous. Um, you got great bullet selection, great factory loadings for it. Um, it'll do everything you need to do. So I uh, hope this is informative to anyone that was looking at it or wondering about it, stuff like that. Um, I, or if you're just like me and like hearing other people's opinions and why they choose that. Um, so uh, if I think of anything, I'll probably try to put an annotation or I'll put it in the comments or something. Otherwise, if uh, you guys want to comment, go ahead and I'll try to get back to you. And I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you got a different opinion or... If you've got something else you want to say, go ahead. Just be respectful, and I'll be respectful of you. And um, 
you know, I'm always up for discussion. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll uh, see you guys later. Bye.